Hey there, Touch Designer programmers, Matthew here. So when we left, we had this kind of fun uh, thing that we had that we were drawing over here that looked a little something like this. That's really interesting as a way to think about how we draw, um, how we instance pixels um, with geometry. But what we're up to is thinking about how we draw that in time. How do we add another element to that? So that's what we're going to do next here. This is all well and good, but let's push it just a little bit harder and see where we get to. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and we'll leave all of these elements here. We've got a bunch of the things that we need, but we need to think just a little bit differently here about a few elements. So the first thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and turn off for just a hot second all of our stuff that um, kind of treats uh, the depth here with any kind of noise. We're going to get rid of that for a hot second. We're also going to hop for a hot second. We're going to turn our circle back on and we're going to turn our box off because that'll help us kind of think about this in a different way. And we're also in our instances, let's turn our source geometry back down to 30 and 40 and 10 and 8. And we're just going to do that to make sure that nobody's computer catches on fire or does anything crazy. Hopefully this should leave, with, leave us with a number of instances that anybody is able to actually follow along with. And if you want to turn it up, then by all means, turn it up to 11 or 45, whatever you feel like. Okay, anyway. So the next ingredient for us here to think is to think about how we take this idea and how we convert that into something that happens in time. So for starters, we need to come back over here Oops, excuse me, uh, over here to our instances. And this grid that we started with is wonderful, but it's not going to be enough for us because we actually need slices of this, right? Like this is just a single slice and I need something that's got some depth to it. So what can I, what can I use that's going to have some depth? So what we're going to go ahead and grab is we're going to grab a box. So we'll grab a box stop. And our box up, let's go ahead, uh, and I happen to know a few of these uh, ingredients already because I have been working on them, um, but you're welcome to experiment with these a little bit. I happen to know that I want this to be 52 by 50 by 62, right? It's a big old almost cube, right? There it is. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use the W key to turn on the wireframe. So I can see right now, this is just a box. That's great. So far, so good. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the divisions. So divisions allows me to think about this instead of being as uh, just a box that has uh, kind of coordinates on the outside. Now I've got all of these interior coordinates and that's really going to be very useful for me. So in terms of my divisions, I'm going to now go and I'm going to say 39, right? which is close to 40, you might remember, uh, 29, close to 30. And we're going to start here with 40 slices in Z. And there we can start to see our preliminary geometry that we're going to use for all our instancing. So this is our first kind of set of ingredients. Now, let's go ahead and we'll just plug this into our null here for a hot second. And let's see what we end up with. And we don't see anything over here, right? Because so far we're instancing with RGB and A. So let's turn those off just so we can see all of our instances. And if we were to view this, oops, let's, lovely, we've got some borders here. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Link. And we can zoom out and lo and behold, whew, that is a, a Borg-like box of all sorts of interesting things. Okay, well that's, it's got some cool patterns, um, but that's not very interesting yet. That's okay, we're gonna make it interesting. What's important for us to kind of start with is the realization that we are in fact drawing a whole bunch of these circles at all the coordinates inside of this particular box that lives over here in instances. 
That's really important for us, and we're going to come back to that in a big way. Now, we'll notice that we bypassed our grid business over here. And we need to go ahead and um, tidy up a few things. So I'm going to split my view. I'm going to back out over here. I'm going to zoom in over here to process. And in this fit, I'm going to go ahead and switch up a few things. So in this fit now, um, what we're going to end up with is uh, we're no longer going to look at grid. We're going to look at box one, box one. And I want the parameter divs x oops dot par dot divs x. I'm going to add one to that. Let's copy and paste and y. Right, so now I've still I'm still maintaining that. Uh, relationship of 40 by 30, right? That's the kind of like horizontal and vertical space. That's one of the things that's really important for me to hold on to. So I've got that happening. So far, so good. I'm going to go ahead and make sure this is still color coded because that'll be great for me when I come back to try and figure out what's going on. I'm going to hold on to that. Now, uh, the next question for me to think about is how do I take this and how do I draw something through time here? How do I draw it through all of these slices? Right? How do I think about that? Well, one way that I might think about that would be something with something like, say, uh, a feedback. So I'm going to take this one texture. I'm going to try to think about how I can use a single texture to do all of the computation for my uh, particular ends in this. So to that end, let's go ahead and let's add in here a composite. We're going to need a constant. And the constant that we're going to use, our constant that we start with, needs to be the length of all of our slices as if they were stacked end to end. Right? So if we were to think about um, taking these and stacking them one right after another, one image and then another image and then another image, right? So if, uh, for example, if I was, you know, if we're imagining this is a train where this is frame one or frame uh, zero, if it's the present, this would be frame negative one, one frame behind. There's another frame over here. We're going to draw that as one big long texture. So here in my constant, I'm going to go ahead and use a couple of our uh, same parameters that we've already worked with and a different parameter uh, to make that happen. So the first thing that we're going to do is we can think about the height of this thing as being the same as the height of this one over here. So let's go ahead and just uh, take that and copy it. All right, great. So we happen to know the height, right, is uh, divs y plus 1. We're 30 pixels tall. And we want to be, in terms of our length, we want um, the number of pixels uh, long is going to correspond to our um, width times the number of slices we have, right? So we can think of that as being an equation that looks like this. Let's go ahead and grab this one. So the expression here is going to be nice and long. So it's divs x plus 1 times divs z plus 1. Right, so here we've got the number of pixels in x times the number of slices. And we should end up with something just like this, 1640. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my alpha all the way down. That's exactly what I want. Over here in my composite, I'm going to use input 2 as the fixed layer. I'm in a native resolution. Now, you know, my banana's gone missing here. 
Uh, where did you go? Part of what's going on is let's go ahead and just use over as our method. We can see our banana is smack dab here in the middle. That is not useful for me at all. We can take advantage of a new parameter that we have uh, access to in our transform page. Let's go ahead and justify that horizontal all the way over on the right. So now we've got this guy over here. This is the present for us. This is what's happening right now. And then time stretches back this direction, stretches back away from us. And we can start to think about how to do that with feedback. So let's go ahead and add a feedback top. Let's add a transform top. And we're going to transform um, backwards, right? So let's go ahead and change this instead of being fraction to being pixels. Now we know we want to transport, uh, translate backwards the width of one of these. So let's go ahead and grab this equation, right? This expression, excuse me, that we've already written. And the reason I'm using expressions here uh, to solve this particular problem is it means, and we want to go negative, in the negative direction, which means uh, we'll need to actually encapsulate this in some parentheses. Now the reason that I'm using expressions for this is because expressions ensure that when we change the dimensions over here of our box, that we're going to go ahead and uh, rely on our solid programming uh, to know that it's going to push changes here to our, uh, the other elements in our network. So that should help us rest assured that we have a fewer places to kind of change things to keep things updated. Let's go ahead and add one more composite. We can also, in this composite, switch its operation type to over. We're going to plug our first composite into the bottom. We'll complete our feedback loop. And now we should see that we've got bananas, if we were to view this, in every one of these frames. Excellent. That's just what we want. That's what we were hoping for. Okay. So, our, our uh, processing chain over here should be just about done. Let's go ahead and plug our circle in here. And we can see, as we look at this, how this changes with time, right? So the present stretching back to the past. That's going to be really useful for us. So let's come out here. Let's go ahead and grab our geo. Let's turn our instancing back on. And in our instance 2, we can do R, G, B, and A. And we can see that something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Oh, what's what's going on? This this doesn't look right at all. Certainly things are changing and moving, but they're not changing and moving in the way that, that we want them to. So what gives? Well, part of what gives here is the way that we're sorted. We're sorted in a manner um, that's going to make it really hard for us to get the effect that we want. So we need to sort our instances uh, in order to make sure that we can see them correctly. So with that in mind, Let's go ahead uh, and in our instances, let's make a little bit of space here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll sort. So we'll go ahead and sort our instances here. And instead of um, no change, let's sort by vertex order. So that right away, sorting by vertex order, is allowing us to get the effect that we want just about right out the gate. Whew, that's great. That's really wonderful. Right, and if we were to think about that, the, the way that we're kind of thinking about that and the way that we kind of land there in terms of making sure that we understand what's happening is if we were to come in here uh, and we make this viewer active and we were to look at how this is sorted, in fact, you know what, let's go ahead, let's do this. Let's grab another box. Um, that's much simpler, right? Here we go. That's a much more reasonable um, way to look at this. So let's go ahead and bring up our display options. Let's bring up our point numbers. And here we can see that the way that we're sorted goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're kind of counting from back to front, 
here along these um, along depth. And when we I go ahead and grab our sort here, we can just use the same operator. If we were to display our options and see our point numbers here again, now we can see that the way that we're counting goes across the back, right? Zero is here in this back corner, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're kind of uh, each bottom here, each kind of flat is a section. And we've happened to, um, with some practice and a little bit of um, grumbling, that's what we've done over here is we've sequenced our images in a way in terms of this kind of um, stretching them along an, uh, an x-axis in order f to allow us to take advantage of that particular sorting method. So that's really what's happening here in terms of how we're manipulating that and kind of playing with that a little bit. Okay, so that's the kind of nuts and bolts of that. So, you know, we get that. That's fun. Let's view this again. Whoo, that's, that's very pretty. Um, let's go ahead and add something with color because color is certainly much more interesting. So let's dive in here and plug our noise back in. Yeah. Now our instances are a little bit small here. Um, and that's all right because we might play with some other element. We might, for example, here down in instance land. Let's go ahead and do something fun. Like let's uh, grab, let's get rid of this game that we were playing earlier. Let's select out from our chops. Let's grab our alpha. So we'll grab A. And right now A is on a scale of zero to one. That's wonderful. It's very helpful. We're going to actually put it down here so we have a little bit more room to play. Um, let's go ahead and add a math to this because I want these to not ever quite totally disappear. So I want this thing to go from like 0 0.1 to 1, for example. I'm going to actually set this up so that we're grabbing A, but we're changing this to scale. That's the name we're giving it. So now we're using the brightness, right? We're using the alpha of our pixels to determine their scale. If we scoot this over here a little bit. Now let's come over here and in our geo. Let's go back to our instance one page. And let's use scale for these guys. All right. So that's not too exciting yet. Let's go ahead and pump that up a little bit. Let's say that it goes up to two. Oh, all right. So now zero to one maps out as 0 0.1 to two. So now we've got a lot of change inside of our instances. That's really interesting. Let's go ahead in our light. Let's change one other thing. Instead of a point light here, let's make this a distant light. That will allow us to see these a little bit better. And now we view our geometry, right? Now we can see that we've got this much more interesting thing that we can kind of swim around in. And we might play with how, where our camera sits and how we render this and how we actually explore some of this, right? Because we could actually set up our camera to kind of drift lazily through all of these elements um, and give us something that's really interesting and fun to look at. While we're here, let's go ahead and uh, in process, I'm going to go ahead and leave this up over here in the bottom right hand corner so we can see what happens. We might, for example, turn our circle back on because why not? It's always fun to see that. Great. What happens if we grab a ramp? Ramps are really fun to play with this. So we can plug this in here. And let's animate our ramp. So we know that our our phase here is one way that we can drive this. So let's make this like abs time dot seconds. Right, we can see that's kind of washing over the top of this. You know what, instead of our render here, I'm going to bring up our geometry viewer 
because that will be slightly more interesting for us to be able to kind of manipulate around. Right, we can kind of see how time works here in a slightly different way. Um, so instead of drawing this uh, as a vertical ramp, we might try a horizontal ramp. Right, that gives us a slightly different effect. We might do a radial ramp. Right, that gives us this kind of corkscrewing situation. That's very fun. We could do a circular ramp. Now remember that our alpha is determining our size. So we might come in here, add a key in the middle, and our key here at the end, we might make transparent, and our key here on the other end, we might make transparent. And our key here in the middle, let's crank the brightness on that a little bit. So now we've got a very different kind of feeling. We have got this warbling, shape-shifting situation. And while we're at it, let's, let's turn up the size on that even more. Let's go to three. Yeah. And of course, we're not limited, right? We certainly don't have to do this as circles. We could do these as boxes instead, or as cubes. So now we've got this cubey, particle -y situation that spring in and out of existence. Oh, and we've left the scaling on this thing, a cattywampus. Let's change it back to 0 0.1. Yeah, now they're all uniform. Now they're proper cubes. Right, so now we've got this really kind of strange alien landscape that we're drawing. This is moving, you know, really quickly, but it gives us a sense of of the kind of uh, thing that's possible for us to play with here. Let's, you know, one last time, let's maybe um, stick some noise in here instead. Yoink, there we go. Or if you're feeling especially brave, let's grab a movie file in and realize that, you know, we're no longer trapped with thinking about this in terms of just, Im uh, you know, seeing still images, we could also grab movie files. So it's hard to see what's going on there, but that is definitely a movie file that's playing, that's instancing over time. So we're pixel mapping a movie, right? It's the resolution's cranked way down, but it's still there. And we could even, we might even, whoa! Uh, Try not to mess up anything. Um, we might grab uh, some other video, if I can think of where that is. I bet there's something in here. Let's try something like this. Right, so now we've got this footage here. It's actually, you know, quite large. 1280, 1920 by 1080, excuse me. We're cranking down the resolution, so it still exists there. And from the right distance, you can still kind of see what's happening. With the right footage, this could start to be really fun. You could also explore footage from the back. Right, or we can use we can use footage abstractly as a way to just uh, fill our field with color. It's not necessarily important for us to know what it is that the footage is. Um, it's just that the footage is is driving some element inside of this. So that's what we're up to here today. That's the kind of fun, uh, exciting thing to think about. Um, we've got one other step here uh, next to kind of push this a little bit farther. So tune back in if you want to push this one more little nudge.